And some tough decisions made by the organization. That they all, there always are tough decisions, and even with a team that most people would have assessed is um, didn't have a, a whole bunch of decisions to make. You did have a fair few. Um, your general manager was in here last week. We had a conversation with him. I asked him specifically. I said, you know, who's got the final say on this kind of stuff? And, you know, he gave me the committee line, and um, I assume it was. Um, were there tougher decisions than normal this year? Um, I assume there were some some that were you and, and, um, and Kyle disagreed. Yes, no? No, I wouldn't say we disagreed. I would say there was tough decisions for sure, and I think the better the people, the harder the decision. And when you look at Mac, you look at C's, these are quality, quality, quality people. I'm happy for C's that have been traded to Dallas. will have no opportunity. Being our seventh and eighth guy wasn't going to be something he would have cherished. Uh, Mac, I mean, got a beautiful family, two kids here in school. Uh, makes it real hard for him. Mac was as good as backup as you could have in the National Hockey League last year and did a job for us and saying all that. Well, we have Sparks, he's the American League goalie of the year, he was you know, six, three and a half. He's a young athlete, was uh, won the Calder Cup. These are hard decisions, but uh, you make a lot of them. I, you know, it was interesting today, we put up those pictures, eight guys that have never been on an opening day roster, and I don't know how many total changes from last year's opening day, but 10 or 11 or something like that. That's a lot of changes. Yeah. How, uh, good, can, how good can Igor Ozaganov be? Yeah, good question. Uh, you know, what I've been most impressed with, can you imagine not even being able to speak the language and being able to figure everything out? What I really like about him, uh, his head's up all the time. He makes real good passes. We haven't seen the shot yet. He's got a cannon. Uh, he's got a real good stick defensively. He's still trying to get used to the pace. And what I mean by that, when you go from a big rink to a small rink, everyone thinks you need to be a better skater on a big rink. The game's slower on a big rink. And you can save your momentum. You can keep skating. You don't have to stop and start. In our game, it's on you so quick. So as he gets used to the pace, he'll become a better and better player. The other thing I like about him, don't mind cross-checking you. When he bumps into you, sometimes you just fall down just because he's that big. And he's long. And to me, in our game, that really helps a defender. We're looking for a penalty killer with one crack in the risk and clear 200. That's been an issue for us. to can do it. How, how concerned are you during a game about uh, lost in translation? Because let's be honest, his English isn't very good, and you can't expect Zaitsev to uh, be around every time you want to talk to him. You know, in the game, it's not an issue because it's the game, and if he knows the game. Where it's the hardest for him is in practice. As you're doing drills to simulate the game, his hockey sense, he has to do exactly what you tell him. So his hockey sense... Uh, comes through in games, got real good hockey sense. So I'm not as concerned about that. It'll make it a lot easier for him. He's been away from his family, I don't know, for six, seven, eight weeks here now. Uh, the wife and the baby arrived here this week. I think that's real important for a guy, too. you, you got to have a whole life, I really believe, especially in Toronto. you got to be away, able to get away from the game. And these guys that are trying out for your team, you know, I don't care what anyone says, camps goes on and on and on and on. They're just hoping to be there and now he can uh, not relax, but he can take a breath and get ready for the next push. With uh, the head coach of the Maple Leafs, Mike Babcock, it's probably the wrong question to ask, but I'm I, I'm trying to figure out how to phrase it. But how do you? Is there one guy that? Oh, just... is, there, is there one guy that just surprised you at, at camp this year? Uh, I'm trying to go through all that. No. No, yeah, not really. Um, you know, I was happy uh, with the work of Jimmy Palafito and our free agents. I thought that was fantastic. Uh, anytime you can get free players in today's National Hockey League, that's a home run. That was good. Uh, what we're seeing now is our players are good, and it makes it harder for the guys trying out. It makes it harder for the young guys who are on the Marlies to make the team. The bar is set differently. And so that makes it tougher. Um, but what I would tell you is our guys went to work this summer. I was doing impressed with them, whether it be with their skill coach, with their skating coach, with their, their, their training, so with their body. Guys look fit. Guys have worked hard. I've been impressed. Uh, you've seen lots of Tavares um, from the, uh, the opposite bench. Um, what, what have you found out about him that maybe you didn't know? 
Well, I knew a fair bit about John. I coached him twice. You know, I talked to him lots here this last time at the World Cup. Yep. Uh, what did I learn? I've, I've learned more how much of a hockey junkie he is, how professional he is, how committed to his craft he is, how he understands the process. I think one of the – as talented as a player he is, one of the greatest things he's bringing to our room is a guy who, who wants more who's been through some struggles, who understands what it takes. I think Patty Marlowe is the same way. Patty knows that the window is closing, and it's now time for him. And they bring a sense of urgency that a bunch of 20-year-olds don't have. Is there a deference in the room to guys like Tavares and Marlowe? Well, there's no question about it. Uh, Haynes is good that way, too, is they've just been there's around. No, yeah. And they don't get caught up. They don't get caught up in all this extracurricular activity uh, they just worry about playing and they go home and relax and enjoy their family and then they come back and play again i think it's a real good thing for our guys the other thing is when you look at our young guys uh, that are here one's playing with uh, marlo and one's playing with Tavares. like those are good mentors for you those are good people they love hockey they love conditioning they live good lives those are the kind of people you want uh, on the st- strategy side, Mike, uh, you, you have uh, enjoyed Nazem Kadri's role as a, a center to match lines with the other team's best. Yeah. How do you how do you manage Naz's time? Because I think he's been hugely valuable to you when you have Austin and John as the other centers, and if they all get twenty minutes, that's sixty minutes. Where uh, I, I just don't know how everybody, all, all your centermen are going to get all the time they're going to be happy with. Yeah, they're not all getting twenty. So, you know, we talked about that as a group here today is we believe we got more depth. We believe we can play shorter and faster, keep everyone fresher. That's going to be important. Uh, you know, I'm not too worried about what people think. Uh, I'm worried about winning. Lindholm has got a, or the GOAT, they got to do an excellent job in the face-off circle and they got to do a real good job on the penalty kill to get some minutes that way. Um uh, when three of them go out on the power play together, me getting them back in the game quickly is going to be an important part of how I do my job. Uh, we got to keep our guys in rhythm, and so we got to do a better job than I did of that, especially in my first time. The second time, I was better. Uh, but when you put it all together, these are real good problems to have, aren't they? Oh, they're great you problems know, to have. On, good. Yeah. But that's the, the best teams that you coach. Uh, every guy would like more ice time, but every guy likes winning. And depth and internal battle is what allows you to win. And we're fortunate that we put ourselves in a position now to have a good five, seven-year run. You know, with our contracts, with our, the use of our play, players, with the setup we have, we really believe we got multiple opportunities at it. I think that's what you need to have success. I think, you know, uh, when you look at Washington, they're, they're living proof of it. When was the last time you talked to William Nylander? You know, what I did is um, I, I talked to the guys all summer, and then when this got kind of, how would I say, when it got like it wasn't just going to be done, I stopped talking because I didn't want to, mm-hmm. him to feel like I was recruiting him, like I was pushing him. Uh, not that we don't care. I wouldn't like to have him back. We'd like to have him back. But I think now this is between the manager and his representatives, and uh, they'll get it done when uh, when it gets done. One of the things, I don't know whether it's obvious to everybody, but the turnaround of this franchise um, just in the last two years is extraordinary. And there are people who believe that you have a shot at winning a Stanley Cup. In fact, uh, at, at one point in time, you were the favorites in Las Vegas, which means nothing, but and not to put any pressure on you, but I just... The, are you surprised at how quickly this has come together? Because you have a team that can compete with anybody now. Well, I like that you're thinking that, that we have a team that can compete. I agree with you. Uh, you know, the first year we took it south, and then since then we've been going straight north, which is real positive for us. Um, things have gone well. Uh, we won the lottery. And, um, Marner's turned into a real player. Gardner and Riley are real players. Uh, we've got us a goalie. Uh, you go through the whole thing that uh, Hyman is way better than you could have hoped. Uh, Brown is way better than you hoped. Naz has turned into a real good player. You go through it all, and then we've been able to add real good depth. And then 
we got free agents to come that people said they'd never come, they come. And I think you'll end up seeing more over time. So to me, you're excited about the opportunity. Pressure is an interesting thing. Pressure simply means you have a chance. And I think you want to do everything with a chance. You go to Olympic Games, you have no pressure on you. That means you have no expectation for success. We all want expectations for success. You know, what I always tell people in this coaching business, pressure was when I couldn't feed my family. The rest of us has just been fun. (laughs) 